James, I have, James, I've got uh, two questions for you. One, not Florida State related, but since you did play the game at that level, I'm curious. So the first one is Florida State related to an extent. AP coaches poll came out, or the coaches poll came out this week. Did you guys look at that, care about that, think about, give it any value at all when the polls came out, whether that was before the season or during the season? Um, Before the season, yeah, because we grew up in an era where you picked up the Street and Smith magazine, ESPN the magazine, all those different things. And it was more for bragging rights. Um, it was cool. Like, you wanted the respect of, of the nation. And, like, you know, one poll we were ranked kind of low, and then I, I really don't – but now as I got mature, we really don't care about polls. There's a slant. There's always something that goes with it, but, um, but yeah, you kind of like if when you're good, you you expect to be in the top ten year in and year out. Next question deals with the Wake Forest situation. So, you can't relate to this in regards to you played on a team with talent on every positional unit, NFL guys. So you didn't play in this type of situation, but. I can only like, and even though there are better quarterbacks at Alabama, Ohio State, we're still talking about one of the 10 best quarterbacks in the country, maybe out for the season at Wake Forest. But in addition to that, I can only think of maybe Virginia with Brennan Armstrong losing a more valuable player. Like Wake Forest was horrible on defense last year. They won 11 games and they had a bad defense. They only run the ball okay. Like, they were all passing offense. That was the entire MO of that team. And they lose a guy who accounted for 50 touchdowns last year. Can you put yourself in a position of not just losing a quarterback on a really good team, losing a quarterback where the entire success of the team is predicated on throwing the ball downfield? Well, I know it, I can relate to that very well. My senior year, um, we lost a quarterback to a non-football-related um, injury. Um, we lost Wyatt Sexton. Um, Wyatt Sexton completely changed the trajectory of what our offense was going to be. Um, we had to play Drew Weatherford, and Drew, while very good and talented, was a redshirt freshman. He didn't have command of the offense, and he had to learn on the fly. Um, now, we lost Wyatt in, like, a couple weeks before camp, so we had a little bit of time to adjust, but it's still a thing that kind of tweaked where we were trying to go with our offense. And, you know... I think we probably would have won. We went, I believe we went eight and five and eight and five that season. Mm -hmm. so we still won the ACC, but I think we are. I think we're two games better that year if we plan with Wyatt. If we're playing with Wyatt. If I'm being completely transparent, um, and but you know, you can, but this right here, they don't even have a uber talented backup like we have again with Drew Weatherford and Xavier Lee. Um, it, it's tough for schools like Wake Forest because this is what you build up for you. Most of their kids redshirt when they come in, and every three to four years they have a really, really good run of football. And now that this guy is done, it's just kind of like how can you project them to be as talented as they were with them? Even if he comes back, let's say somehow, not miraculously, and I hope he recovers well, but let's say he comes back for the Florida State game October 1st, if I remember correctly. He's not going to be in game shape, and, and that's a hell of a way to get reintroduced to your college football season. My guess, my question would be to you, and, and I, I don't feel comfortable talking about football, you know, knowing and, and there's been the stories that's talked about his life, you know, losing his brother and whatnot. So I guess my question to you would be, and I, I want to word this the, the proper way, if you are, if you are Sam Hartman at this rate, do you even try to come back this season? I mean, and obviously, Wake Forest hasn't released what you know what it is that he's going through and whatnot. And like I said, I hope we all, all hope and pray the best for him. But do you just sit out this entire season and not even try to come back at this point if you're Sam Hartman? I mean, if it's a mental health issue, I think people, I think he needs to sit out. Um, I think a lot of people don't take mental health um, serious enough. And I think bigger than that, um, there needs to be more done to help guys become more resilient. Um, there's resiliency training, um, stuff like that, because this is a tough sport. Social media has made it harder. But, like, you know, you go into 
you go into venues that are away venues where people are telling, calling you everything outside of your Christian name, trying to break your concentration. Um, you've got your family that, you know, they get attacked. You've got a lot of different stuff. And the world is a mean place. Um, and if you didn't grow, not saying if, if, you, if you're having a hard time dealing with it, sometimes taking a break is what you need. The hardest part, though, is this is a physical game. It's physical and mental that's married together to be able to come out and create a beautiful product or beautiful art, as I like to call it. You, if your mental isn't there, you got to take a step back. But you, if you take a step back, your physical is not going to be there. So something is going to take take hurt, going to hurt, and you actually could hurt the team by trying to rush it back because you're doing something for your teammates. Now, I'm all about being selfish. But at a certain point, your health is the most important thing, and it's actually not selfless like you think it is. It's selfish for you to try to force yourself back for what you think your, your teammates are missing. You have to be the best version of you, and that's what I'm hoping for Sam um, and his family. You know, get, get them right. Take your time. And that's why they have med reds. Take your medical red shirt. Do something to, like, help. And I hope if he sits out this season the NCAA – allows him to be able to do that, and I hope nobody holds any of this against him because he's a hell of a ball player. And as I, I saw one fan, you know, one not fan, excuse me, one of them blue check people thinks that FSU fans were rooting for him to not come back. Nah, we're like Spartans, man. I, I want you at your best when I beat you up. I, I don't want to whoop your tail and you say you had a cold. No, I want you 100% there. So when I take your will from you, you have no excuses. It's more fun that way. And I think that's what, you know, if we beat Wake Forest, I want to beat Wake Forest with a Sam Hartman, who's a hell of a tremendous competitor. Um, I don't want to beat them weak. And I, I hope the best for him and his family. And, you know, I, if I prayed, I would tell him that he's in my prayers, but he's in my thoughts. Yeah, and I mean, we're all at this point now, and I, I think it's a good thing that we are being able to be open and transparent talking about mental health. And, you know, I've been, I've been very open about saying that seeing a psychologist is the one thing that kept me from killing myself during my divorce and going through, you know, my battle with alcoholism and stuff like that. It's, it's a very, it's a very important thing. And you're talking about, you're the, the quarterback for a power five major program. So I, I think that's my thing. And I, I hope, I hope, and I hope, I hope that there are not FSU fans. And I know there's going to be some idiots out there who are going to, use this as a, as, oh, as a good thing. Now it's easier, it's easier road for us. No, you know, pray, pray for him. If you pray, think about him. If you, if you don't, but just at this point, just let him do his thing, whatever it is. 